takes forever to start. There it is, right? Hey everyone, thanks for coming to the end of the month call. Uh, so we have just a few of the standard items on the agenda and we will start by talking, uh, getting feedback from you on what worked uh, particularly well this month for you. Anyone would like to share? I think too, just to, to set context for the whole call, and this is sort of the structure that we used last month too. So if anybody has any feedback on like how to improve the structure, we should stay with it moving on. Um, so what went well? What didn't go well? What type of activities should we be incentivizing for the next iteration of the rewards? And then actually implementing what that looks like. So tangible like metrics that we should track for like tying like um, I guess, actionable or accountable numbers to what we're hoping to achieve. So what's good, what's bad, what do we want next month, and how do we measure that in order to get it? And at any point in time, if anybody wants to jump in and share ideas about anything, feel free to do so. So I, I have some things that went well, I think, but would love to hear what everybody else thinks first. What? Yeah, um, this is something I thought that I would like and that I did like is that, you know, um, encouraging more comments on papers that get submitted. I mean, obviously not all papers come with comments, which is still fine, but I definitely like, I think that both the frequency of comments and the quality of comments has improved. So that at least was good. Yeah, I totally agree. I think there's like some pretty good, like kind of like cross commentary on papers now too, where even people who don't submit it are sharing like kind of analytical thoughts about the contents within the paper. So totally agree. Hey, Scott. Uh, hey, man. Hey, y'all. How's everyone doing? Doing good. We're, we're talking about, uh, in theory, what went well during the last month, like what people liked uh, from the second month of the editor program versus the first one. Is that a question? <laughs> General discussion. Just wanted to give you the context. No, I appreciate it. Um, I'll go ahead and say, I think there was a lot better internal communication among people in this most recent month. So that was the thing I was happiest to see. And on that, um, I'll be here on that lunch, but I'm going to be fully on listening. And just as a FYI, I'll be in the chat like normal. Scott, do you mind just uh, like quickly going a little bit more into depth when you say internal communication is that like people dming each other within the community or like top down type of communication like what specifically did you like that we could like maybe help to encourage more next month yeah of course happy um so it was more and it's hard to put a, a finger on but i think it was just like seeing in dms not necessarily communication but like people influencing each other of saying oh we did that or we did this and then someone else um, doing that and building on it in their own way or asking questions about it, I thought was really useful. So um, I got some out of that and I'd like to see more of that. Yeah, totally. Um, two, two things that I had on my list of things I was like pretty excited about this month. Um, and I think it builds off that. But one is kind of like uh, community experiments. So um, Jeff, kind of was like screwing around with posts of like bounties on how to get like other people on research hub to earn research coin or doing like some like literature uh, searches for him uh, in order to like help his own work. So I thought that was pretty cool uh, where Jeff threw it out there and like Nick, you know, they're friends. So I'm sure they coordinated behind the scenes a little bit, but it was interesting to see like a use case that we had not considered whatsoever kind of like being used. And I think it actually like it, it makes sense because it, you know, someone can pay tokens to save them time, which is kind of a like it, it makes a lot of sense, like in a practical perspective. So, so those experiments and then Ricardo's uh, perpetual review, I think, is also really cool. So, um, yeah, people kind of like getting a little weirder in a good way with like how the features can be used on Research Hub, trying to think of like what's the next step to improve them. I think it's been awesome. Um, another thing kind of like building off Scott's comment is like we have a lot of people who just want to help grow Research Hub. Like we're doing some discussions now about like how to like best uh, leverage people's energy and efforts into like social media outreach. And I think we've had like a great response from people who just want to chip in 
um, you know, to do some of the hand to hand combat, like manual labor there. And so to me, that's like very encouraging. Um, yeah. And so hopefully this next month we'll uh, have some infrastructure when it comes to making sure that people can be, um, you know, adequately recognized for these efforts. Uh, Ricardo put together kind of like a bounty table. So like in theory, we can do something where like Satvik, for instance, mentioned wanting to create a newsletter, which would be amazing. Like over, over the course of like six to nine months, I think could be like a pretty effective way of helping to like build Research Hub's brand. And so we'll, we'll have the infrastructure to like, if people like Satvik want to do something like that, they'll be able to earn tokens for doing so and like have like, you know, adequate recognition of the efforts they're putting in. So that should be implemented within the next couple of days and we'll publicize it in the community channel so everyone can see. So, so yeah, just like kind of like even outside posting on the forum, people like putting a lot of energy and effort into creative ways to try and make research up better, which I think is super encouraging. Yeah, I really share your like your point, both your point and Scott's ones, like it's, there has been an increasing uh, number of, let's say, cross talking between people, even from like different hubs, just exchanging ideas on like how to make the platform better. And like these uh, kind of like um, initiatives from, from people were also like really cool, starting from uh, Jeff one. So I really love that. Uh, something I'm still kind of like having a hard time uh, being able to do is uh, growing my hub. But I think that will come, uh, you know, when when we implement some new strategies for like actually outreaching outside of uh, research hub, that will probably come, you know, uh, with like with just like with time, because that's the only thing that I'm having uh, difficulty in, in doing right now. That's a great point. I think it's it's not an easy thing to do. Um, like even if you look at research hubs, like lifetime weekly active contributors, um, we were at like ten weekly active contributors for like six months. And five of those were like team members of Research Hub. And most of the other five were like my personal friends that I guilt tripped into using Research Hub. So yeah, I think I think these things kind of take a while. Um, and like you start to see seeds of growth and all of a sudden it just accelerates like crazy. So yeah, I think this is sort of what's to be expected. But um, I, when it comes to like individual hub growth, uh, I think we're gonna start doing some AMAs. And to me, that seems like a great way to get like some like hub specific attention, where if we do a paper, you know, about biosensing and we have like a cool biosensing person, uh, you know, live to talk about it, answering questions on Research Hub, that would be something that's like appealing to people studying biosensing. And so in theory, we'd be able to share it around the Internet and try and like create value to bring people in. And I'm hoping that uh, we, we have an AMA scheduled for the end of the month here. Um, and we'll try and like document the whole process in the open of like organizing it, like marketing it, uh, how we set up everything, how we get people to like ask questions on the research hub page. So that way it would be repeatable for anybody interested in like doing an event kind of within their own hub to help bring attention to their specific field. Sapig? Oh uh, yeah. Do we know who we are bringing for this AMA? I mean, have we finalized the person? Yeah, so um, his name is uh, Shadi, and he's one of the founders of Opsciencia, um, which is another like uh, Web3 uh, DSI project. Um, they're the people who helped put together the Ethereum uh, Denver conference. So I'll share the paper um, that he published. I think he published it like about a week ago. Um, and there are like four or five authors on it. So uh, we're going to essentially uh, organize, try and get like everybody in the community to ask a question on it, uh, on the actual Research Hub paper page. And they'll respond to it on the Research Hub paper page. And then we'll also hold like a live like uh, interview, basically, where um, we talk about those questions. We, we have the authors present their paper, then we talk about the questions, and then we have like a live discussion for anybody who wants to ask anything. Um, yeah, so this is gonna happen, I think like the third week of March. And so I think the real valuable stuff will be before the actual event where we go about like, hey, how do we get DSI people, you know, who are interested? Like, are there DSI Facebook groups? You know, or is there DSI Reddit uh, or subreddit or whatever? Like, uh, yeah, do we have to do DSI TikTok videos? Um, that, that process of how do we get 30 people who have never heard of Research Hub before in a room 
you know, to talk about this paper just because they're interested in DSI. And I think that's a repeatable process that will be able to help scale to anyone who wants to hold an event and then compensate uh, with research coin bounties for people who want to take on that additional responsibility. I agree. Everyone should be interested in DSI. <laughs> That's a great point, Scott. Um, cool. Yeah, so uh, I have a couple of other things that went well, but we're just about at 15 minutes now for the first section. So does anybody else have any final thoughts on things that they thought went like pretty well during this month? Can I ask a quick question, Patrick, please? Absolutely, yeah. So you, you mentioned uh, the idea of a newsletter. Uh, Sorry if I miss any any communication in the on Slack. It might very well be so, uh, but I wonder um, if if you can share more information and and whether you think it might be an opportunity to give some uh, maybe share some ideas about how that might work because I think so I really um, um, uh, sympathize with Ricardo's uh, comments about uh, you know the challenge of of finding more people that that could be interested in in a, in a hub. Uh, and then maybe the newsletter could be could be a way to right, maybe showcase some of the uh, of the most interesting conversation that have been going on uh, last month on some hubs, something like that. Uh, so I wonder if we can if we could have a discussion about that later on when it will become concrete. Yeah, I mean, I think it makes sense to take a couple minutes now if you're interested. I know Satvik's kind of like the the brains behind the operation here. So Satvik, do you mind kind of explaining what your vision is for a newsletter and we can uh, riff on it for a couple minutes? Uh, yeah, I didn't really have a clear vision right now. Uh, I just knew that since we already have this sort of outsourced pool of mostly objective data with us, I think it it's just waiting to be captured in some form of content marketing. So it can be YouTube, it can be newsletters. And newsletters seem to be the best fit because they did not require a lot of work upfront as maybe YouTube would require. Like, uh, so I had this idea that we'd create uh, either individual newsletters for each hubs uh, or we'd create a, a research hub newsletter overall in which it would be the best of science throughout the week, for example. Uh, so yeah, that was the rough idea I had. Uh, and yeah, further discussions on it would definitely help me also uh, clear out what exactly we can build this into. Giovanni, is that uh, kind of what you're thinking is interesting about a newsletter, like best of research hub, or are you specifically thinking like a like a meta science newsletter where we review like the most oh. <laughs> meta science papers, you know, of a week or something? Yeah, no, 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 no. I think it's maybe later on. <laughs> no, I think I think this sounds great. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Like highlight, you know, the the most interesting bits. Uh, maybe maybe it will be worth thinking about how to do so right because it's of, of course like votes or, or view counts or number of comments that those are easy metrics to use but maybe also a complementary way to go about it is for for editors to do some editing some some creation maybe suggest interesting things that they think might be you know valuable to to uh to showcase a combination of the two but i mean it sounds really great and I'll, I'll be happy to help uh, down the line if you if you like of course Totally. I'm thinking there's a nice system here where, Safik, if you're open for it, you could take the lead on a newsletter and we could do something like Research Hub Bounties to editors if they want to do like a quick blurb about a cool thing that happened in their hub that week. We could just open it up to anybody, maybe do like three to five every week and just like, hey, here's something cool that happened in my hub. Like, check out this cool information. So that way it's even like, you know, crowdsourced content creation for you, Safik, and you just have to organize the process and help to share it around um cool yeah so just to, to touch on two things that i also think went really well before we moved on to what we can improve um just to share screen here for one second i'm gonna look at the metrics which is uh our north star weekly active contributors here so if everybody can see uh this is like just at the beginning of the editor program here when we went up to 78 so 78 73 86 95 78, 79, 91, 100, 84, 72, 74, 83. So it seems like we have a really nice floor here of like just above 70 uh, weekly active users. 
and or weekly active contributors. And to me, this is like super encouraging where it seems like all the editors are excited and doing stuff. And so we have like basically a floor of weekly active contributors based on the editor program. And, uh, you know, if we're able to kind of get more attention to the token and raise the market cap, this is something that will essentially like scale uh, linearly with the market cap. So um, in theory, like if Research Hub is, you know, worth X now, uh, and like it could be worth like 2x in the future, we'd be able to double the editor program and get this floor up to 150 uh, weekly active contributors. So uh, we think that's like pretty cool that at the absolute worst case, the editor program is a great like like baseline from which to grow contributions. So, so that's very exciting. Um, and then the other thing that I think is like really cool is... Uh, the uh, RIP1 passed. So we got our first like community vote in and like it actually has like some influence over how like the research hub forum will be structured. And so that's another thing which like, uh, it takes a decent amount of work behind the scenes to organize something like that. So big props to uh, Jeffrey and Namrata uh, and Aradia for putting that together because it, it's pretty cool. And it's great to see like, you know, users having like some ownership over how the platform functions. So yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited that we were able to get that out as well. Um, yeah, so anyway, enough good things. Uh, all of the best improvements come from like critical feedback. So um, if anybody has any critical feedback, like let it fly, any, anything even remotely bothering you, it's great to just get it out there and put it on our radar so that way we can potentially help address it. I have another, like a couple of things here just reflecting that I think like the research hub Inc team can improve on, but I uh, would love to hear what everybody else thinks first. I mean, one thing that I think, you know, it's not something that isn't being addressed, but something I just want to bring up again is I think like the fact that the trending doesn't really work still like slows growth and helps like, like hurts, like, like it makes interest, it helped. It's like if you log on to Research Hub one day and then log on the next day and the next day and the trending's the exact same, I feel like you're not likely to log on the day after that. You know what I mean? Like, so I think that's the issue um, with just like the trending. I think that even though it seems small, getting that fixed would go a long way, like more than maybe people think. Yeah, so that that's actually the number one thing that I had as well is like technical difficulties. And, and I think like, unfortunately, this is just, you know, the how it is for like a small startup team. But I, I totally agree, Lynn, I think like our filters are not working properly. And it kind of detracts from the experience. I know Kobe's working on it now. But even stuff like new, like people complain that like, the newest paper, like from that filter are from like, four or five days ago. So yeah, like, completely broken. Um, and, and then even some of the load more things. Yeah. So the, the feed needs improvement for sure. Our, our attention's on it. So we're fixing it, but yeah, it'll probably be a week or so until it starts to look better. But I, I'm glad you brought that up because yeah, I think it definitely needs to improve. And, and then another thing too, we talked about this like during our last team sync on Friday is like, we've had like two or three people uh, reach out who like can't sign up who like want to contribute papers, but they can't sign up. And so if, if two or three people have actually reached out and told us that, that's probably like, what, like 10 to 20 who have just been like, screw this, I'll bail. Like, I'm not going to reach out and like waste my time trying to help other people. And so, yeah, I think that's, that's like a huge blocker towards like growing individual hubs. If people, you know, can't sign up at like a 99.9%, .9 you know, like effective rate. So yeah, we, that's on our radar. And again, like very self-reflective, like we need to do better. So, so, so I'm glad you brought that up. And I think like making sure that like people who want to use Research Hub can in its basic functionality is really important. So that's definitely the number one thing that I think that the Research Hub Inc. team needs to improve on next month. Does anybody else have any thoughts? And again, like, like just let them fly. Even if you don't think it's totally validated, like if you feel it whatsoever, it, it's good to get it out there because it's probably something that'll like help us, uh, you know, like percolate new good ideas in uh, like our team's brain. 
uh, one thing that i just wanted to ask you was that uh, does selling rsc improve the overall sort of liquidity of rsc in any way or or the overall value in any way selling rsc uh, yeah because there have been people interested in uh, buying rsc off of editors but and i think i reached out to people uh, i reached out to the editors channel as well but uh, the guys that wanted to buy it did not receive any response from it so is there any upside to actually selling to more editors selling their rsc yeah so this is a great question um it's complicated because of the legal situation um around not wanting to be a security but in, in theory editors who have earned the token can do whatever they want with it research hub inc can't but editors who have earned the token can sell it if they'd like to and there's no risk whatsoever there i think um the beautiful thing about token projects is when people look when more people get the tokens into their hand um like their incentives are in aligned to help research hub grow so to me um the more people who have research coin the better off we'll be because there will be more people essentially contributing to helping us like do cool things um with that being said though i think we have to be kind of mindful here at the very beginning of the project when the market cap is kind of low because someone you know who may not be motivated by improving science and could be more motivated by financial gain can come in and you know scoop up a lot of tokens at a relatively you know inexpensive price and then have significant influence over the community because of that so like from our like internal perspective thinking long term one of the most important things we're doing here is making sure that like initial tokens get into the hands of people who care a lot and so like the editor program is a great way to do this because like everybody here is a scientist and like they're all thinking about how to improve research hub and like right. if there's some financial gain associated awesome but i don't think that anybody's here speculating like i think that everybody in this room is here trying to improve science and so those are the type of people we want to have tokens so just random people like when they like crypto speculators it's hard to vet their true intentions so so yeah it's a double-sided coin where more people are good but then we also want tokens in the hands of people who are thinking long term about research hub but Safik, if you have any questions about this i would refer you to jeffrey he's a uh, he's like really bright when it comes to like how to get tokens into the hands of the right people so if you ever like want to sell tokens but you're not sure like what the best thing to do is i would i would chat with jeff and he's like or yeah, i did i mean i did chat with jeff before uh selling a few of my tokens so, yeah he was very helpful with that cool good yeah i'm glad yeah. also uh i would uh i don't have any specific ideas for that but uh, for this but uh encouraging posts like dahlia's where she mm -hmm. uh she posted that she went uh, to some island. I don't remember the specifics, but I think those posts will help increase our interactions overall because uh, I did not know anything speci uh, specifically about her subject, but it was still very interesting to me. Right? Uh, so I think those uh, somehow incentivizing those posts will help us out a lot in the long term. So if it's okay with you guys, I'd like to spend like maybe three to five minutes talking about how we can do that because like at least my long-term vision for research hub like step one is preprint server where people can share content earn tokens for sharing content step two is peer review on that preprint server where preprints can go through version control be peer reviewed and then step three is funding the process so uh dahlia's like blog post and it was almost like a preprint like it was kind of like a layman's terms like casually worded you know version of her actual manuscript which i kind of love it's like jargon free version of what she's working on and so um yeah i think if we can get people publishing original content on research hub that's gonna be like really really cool um there are some like pretty established marketing techniques for preprint servers because a bunch of them are popping up you know left and right now so we could do some of those kind of established techniques but curious if anybody here has any thoughts on like how do we get more basically preprints to be shared to research hub and i think once we get dois added to the publication process that'll be useful because you basically have to have a doi in order to have a preprint but um yeah uh uh yeah yash i think you're on mute 
In response to your question, Patrick, I think mm -hmm. the way that I think about it is maybe we need to reframe and rethink the, the value of Research Hub. I, I totally agree with the three-step process that you outline. Um, and in order for that to materialize, we need to, to make this platform more attractive for people to interact several times per day. So let's say I, I interact with the system because I, I'm, I have this role of, a, of, of an editor, so I see the responsibility that I need to interact with the system, but I'm not coming to Research Hub to find a research article per se. I am not coming to Research Hub to write. I'm not coming there to collaborate. I'm not coming there to use the, the system as my, my bibliography, right? And I think the, this, is, this is one of the ways that I think we can create the system more of a practical tool for for researchers to spend time in it. And by spending time in the system, then they would post more, then they would comment other, on other people's posts or, or, or papers. Um, and and that, that creates this environment that, that I think they're, they're gonna bring their, 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 their co-authors. I know that there is this notebook feature, uh, but I think maybe we need to, to make that, that feature better one something that people just stay there and then they could find the papers that they want to refer to to um like within the system i know that it doesn't have the full repository of all the papers available out there but if we could for instance i don't know if such a feature exists but let's say i want to put a comment can i refer to another paper which is in the repository to create these links between the different different papers that kind of through a, a piece of content which is produced by myself. So I reflected on this paper and I see connections. I think Lynn and I, we kind of did some something like that in, in the, like loosely. I commented on one of the papers that she posted and then through that comment, she was, she got interested in, in the topic. She went and found something else and brought into research hall. And these are the things, these are very intentional behavior, right? We, I think you probably want to make it a little bit unintentional as well to create these moments that in unintentionally some of these uh, interactions come come to the surface. Yeah, it's it's a great point and something we've been thinking about a decent amount. And so just to repeat back your comment to make sure that I got it all, there's kind of like two pieces in my mind. The first is like, yeah, Research Hub is cool as like social media, but social media doesn't really fit into the average scientist's workflow. Everybody's really busy. Like there's no reason to show up multiple times a day um so how can we build something that fits into a scientist's like professional life where it like makes sense to use it regularly because it makes their lives easier um so, so that's the first part that i heard and then the second part was um building the feature to help like link between papers so if if like you comment on lynn's paper you'd be able to like add like a like a at another paper, like adding somebody on Twitter, basically, and having like links between where you can refer back and forth. That's also something we're thinking of. Um, we suggested it as a work trial for Zane. So I think it's it's on the radar and will be built, you know, sooner rather than later. Um, but the first portion of what you said, I think is like, I think that might be the key to really having Research Hub take off. Like we need something that fits into the scientist's average workflow. And so something we've been considering is um, like either integrating with the citation manager or building a citation manager where essentially uh, anyone can earn tokens for using the citation manager. Like imagine if you're writing like a, a thesis or something and um, you're uploading papers into your like Zotero uh, citation manager in order to organize like your own thoughts. We could do something where like when you upload into your citation manager that automatically also uploads to the research hub forum and then anybody else who uploads that paper into their citation manager it's like an extra added upvote or something and so um yeah we can use like a citation manager as like the ui for like the average scientist where they're just going about their like daily like workflow and then like on a grand scale when you have like a bunch of people using this you can take like the information that's produced and like display it within the research hub forum of like hey what what are the papers people are reading right now like if people annotated a paper in their own collection 
like we can have a button that's like earn five research coin for sharing this publicly and then that would automatically go under the paper or something like that so yeah i think paying people to use a citation manager where the data that's created is then hosted within research hubs forum um right now is our best idea on how to kind of like fit into the professional life of researchers do you think that's like a, a decent uh, approach I think it's an excellent idea. I think to make to kind of getting rid of these friction points as much as possible to to for these kind of separate systems to be connected. And I mean, of course, incentivizing people to um, whatever to upload the papers from their Zotero or from their Mendeley or EndNote or what have you directly into into Research Hub. I think doubt that, that that that's that's a great point. But I think generally I meant like whatever mechanism, whatever way that we can find in order to lock in the, the scientists to, for them to, to find more value in coming to Research Hub and looking for uh, a particular paper or a particular topic as opposed to other uh, scientific search engines. And I think to be able to make that, we need to add some add value added features to it to make it more attractive, to make, to, in general, as as I mentioned, to 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 kind of to make the the individual stay longer within within the platform. Uh, it it sounds a bit evil, like the, what Facebook and Twitter does do, but uh, you, but you you know what I'm trying to communicate. Yeah, totally. Not not necessarily like uh like build a walled garden, but more so make the flowers so pretty that people don't want to leave. I, I right. think that makes a lot of sense. Um, right. Yeah, totally. If you ever have any thoughts on stuff that you think would make sense to help provide that value, like feel free to DM me or post it in the community channel. Um, Cause it's definitely Absolutely. something we're thinking about right now a lot and trying to determine like how we should prioritize different features that could do that. Great. I will. Thank you. Cool. Um, so we're a couple minutes over here. Does anybody else have any thoughts on things that we can improve for next month? I can share the things that I have as well. I was, I was wondering if you guys are thinking about revising the hypothesis feature because it, it's a pretty good one, but it's a little clunky to upload sources and such. Uh, do you all think we should prioritize that? We did the V1 of it maybe like, I want to say like almost three months ago, and we've been focusing on other things since. Um, we do plan on going back to the hypothesis feature uh, to to basically make it more refined because it's very much a v1 um yeah curious if, do people have thoughts on the hypothesis feature if it's worth prioritizing over like peer review or um building in a funding mechanism i think it just depends on how much people want it because like i agree with anton that it's very clunky right now and i actually don't use it because i've even had trouble like i'm not sure how i like try to support or try to not support like an existing hypothesis but like whether that's more important than those other things, I guess is the question, because I definitely agree that it needs work, but like those other things also to me might be more important. Um, but I guess that's the, the trade off. Yeah, it's that's that's the hard part is like figuring out exactly where to allocate resources. I, I'm thinking hopefully we'll be able to grow our team here um, like pretty significantly over the next six months, too. So hopefully like a lot of these things like you know, the feeds not being perfect and like getting a V1 of a feature out without iterating on it. Like we'll, we'll have dedicated people to maintain features here shortly. So yeah, I think almost everything will be uh, improving kind of on like a monthly basis. Um, see you, Ricardo, wait a minute. Uh, so for some of the things that uh, like I think could go better, like Lynn mentioned, like some of the technical difficulties are frustrating because I think they like inherently kind of like put a parachute behind us when we're trying to sprint forward um uh another thing that i think like me personally could improve on is like communication channels like i think we're, we're posting in like the editor channel right now with announcements and stuff but i think there are some conversations that are happening in like a siloed fashion um where like we kind of talk about stuff but then th I'm, I'm not sure how to do this but having like a, a central place of communication where like everybody can see new announcements. I even think Slack is like not totally native to everyone in the community. So uh, I'll spend a lot more time this month thinking about how to um, just communicate better in kind of a community like this. And I think it'll 
become more difficult <laughs> as we scale the editor program. So yeah, spending spending time to figure out the infrastructure there that'll work well is important in my mind. Um, cool. So yeah, I guess, uh, does anybody else have anything for the things we should improve before we move on? Nick? Oh, sorry, This I, I thought the call was ending. This isn't specifically about things we should improve. So if we want to stay on that, I could chime in uh, later. Uh, we, we're be. kind of transitioning topics now. So yeah, we'd love to hear what you think. OK, gotcha. I, I just had a, a quick question. Sorry, I'm joining this call kind of late. I was working on something for lab. Um, but I was wondering about, I remember hearing it discussed about the revised uh, criteria for editors on a weekly basis, that it may be put to a DAO vote and things like that. Um, I got an inactive editor email despite having posted. Um, and in the email, it said one comment and one paper was required, which I, of course, achieved. But I was more just curious, is that revised requirements going to be implemented? Is there going to be a DAO vote on that? What's kind of the timeline as far as what we're supposed to do as editors kind of going forward? Yeah, so we've had like some internal discussions um, on like what the community should vote on, like what's the best stuff to have the community vote on. And um, for the editor program in general, it's it's more of like a like research hub is hiring people more so than like a community decision making. So we sort of thought it would it would be better as like a like a top down decision when it comes to the editor requirements. The way we did this is we have like a kind of for lack of a better word like a core team, and so um, like the people in charge of like community operations, we all brainstormed like, hey, what would be like the you know best like minimal editor contribution requirements, and then we just decided to go with that. Um, Anton, do you want to talk a little bit about like the meaningful posts concept and what that looks like? Do, do you have time? Can you? Yeah, one second. So currently, the uh, the minimum requirement for the week is three contributions, and they are tied to the common count because even you you have basically two options: you can upload the paper and uh, leave a summary of this paper. You can find examples. I'll post the link here in a few moments. But uh, that's one alternative. And another alternative would be to find a discussion happening in the comments somewhere and uh, join in and you know provide also a meaningful you know angle at the discussion, maybe help with a few links, maybe share and a figure or something like that. So yeah, so that that might have been why you got the inactivity email because it it's it's counts in the uh, the comments. And I think Nick, the the emails are broken. At the moment, like a bunch of people are getting them who don't, you know, shouldn't be getting them. So yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about it too much. It's just like kind of in the same bucket of the technical difficulties that Lynn mentioned. Um, and, and we did tweak it to to three comments basically. So like the minimum thing for the email is, did you share three comments in the last week? Because in theory, uh, in the meaningful, you know, contribution paradigm. It would be like a paper with a comment or a thoughtful comment on like somebody else's stuff. So comments were the easiest kind of like, uh, you know, lowest common denominator to to use for the email notifications. But yeah, they're they're not working perfectly. So take them with a grain of salt. And anybody watching, I apologize about that. <laughs> Sorry for spamming with, with that kind of thing. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. I just wanted to see if uh, so. I'll, I can post in the bug reports about because the message still says one and one. But now that it's been for sure revised to three, I'll just. Um, posting the bug reports about that to get that kind of sorted out. Yeah, thank you. We should be able to tweet that copy pretty quickly. So yeah, okay. thanks for your posting. It helps to put it on the radar. Sounds good. Thank you. Cool. So for the next topic, um, we'd like to talk about, uh, like in theory, like what type of stuff should we be incentivizing, you know, with the next iteration of editor rewards? We're going to be implementing this like three uh, meaningful posts um, type of like paradigm, as Anton mentioned. But I think in general, like from the stuff that we've liked and we haven't liked so far, like what are the type of things that you all think uh, can bring the most value to Research Hub from the editor program? And then we'll we'll start to think about like how to potentially incentivize uh, those things that are bringing value. Anton's uh, 
he's uh, multitasking here. <laughs> this is a very, very impressive like display of attention. Nick? One, one thing that I've seen employed that's been particularly useful is sometimes an editor may have a post that's very informative, and then they may kind of finish that up with an open-ended question that's sort of probing um, the edges of that. And I find that kind of lowers the activation energy for someone else to comment and could be a good way to sort of stimulate discussion and get that dialogue going back and forth. So I've I found that approach to be particularly useful. You can give somebody kind of a background and then allow them to sort of explore the topic um, on their own in like a safer space. I agree. I actually, I often try to end my posts on my papers with like a question or a discussion topic. Yeah, I, I really love that. Cause sometimes like when it's just a summary, it can be intimidating to be like, oh, I need to read this whole paper in order to understand what's going on. But when you have a leading question that's like a specific part about the paper, it's a lot easier to just zoom in to that like specific aspect and have an opinion, you know, like much quicker than if you were to comment on the whole paper itself. So I totally agree. It's a great point. We're putting together like a document of like, hey, here's what's a good post, you know, here's what's not a good post just for context for people. So that's a, it's a great point. And I'll include that under like, what's a good post? Like, Hey, when you comment on something like try and ask questions that'll like, uh, you know, open-ended questions, leading questions to get other people to uh, engage with it. Does anybody have other thoughts on stuff that they've liked to see so far and want to see more of? So I do have a thought, but it's not really on stuff that is already ongoing. But if uh, if no one else has, has something to share at the moment, I can I can maybe quickly share that. Yeah, go for it. Um, which also relates back to to your point, Patrick, or idea about uh, uh, well, actually, we do have it uh, publications in uh, in Research Hub. Um, and I was wondering, so speaking as a you know academic during the day right so it, uh, it, we all know very well what are the incentives right in, in academia which is that you have uh kind of this strong uh uh urge to uh, publish in specific venues that are widely recognized in your in your field right um which of course makes also alternative venues for publication uh, difficult to build Right? Because essentially what you usually do is you you first gather together a community, so a bunch of folks that are going to submit papers and publish there so that you can have some sort of momentum. It's a very time-consuming thing. Um, so it's not at all to discourage, but I was thinking maybe maybe it would be clever to find entry point that uh, would make Research Hub uh, more palatable, more interesting, right? Also, not just for us, but also for people outside. And one way could be to be topically focused, right? So, so uh, start having set of a set of publications that are on a topic that maybe is not really well covered in other areas. Um, decentralized science, for example, could be a nice uh, a nice idea, right? So, what are the initiatives there? Uh, what people are doing? Uh, different infrastructures, different projects, and the like. But there might be more uh, ideas. So, just wondering if. Um, maybe a possibility could be to have um, a topically focused set of publications that might be showcased on Research Hub and uh, focus on topics that are not very well represented in traditional academic journals. Maybe that's, that is something that could help uh, bring visibility to the Hub. I'm really glad you said this because this is kind of something we've been thinking about from a marketing strategy perspective. Um, so we're really lucky in somebody who uh, was a like leading project management at ResearchGate uh, reached out and we'll kind of like help contribute from an organizational perspective. And so his opinion, and this is something that we've heard of like kind of like briefly before in the past, is that a way to go about what you're describing might be to uh, onboard an academic society onto Research Hub. So right now, societies basically have like publishing deals with big publishers um, in order to like host all their content, more or less. And so uh, it's it's 
potentially viable once Research Hub has like uh, the ability to publish preprints, like with DOIs, people earning tokens. And I think peer review is a necessary aspect of it too. But we could try and basically like poach an academic society and say, hey, rather than having to pay a journal to like host all of this for you, we'll pay you guys if you do it on Research Hub. And so that's a way where in theory we could help to, I think, take big chunks of like like certain fields and bring them on to research hub is by making like the financial arrangement more appealing to the people in charge of the academic society. Um, so, so that's one option. Um, there are even fields where like they're kind of nascent and they don't have a fully established, like, like a formal academic society. So we could help those types of fields, like essentially organize around research hub um, with like more formal, uh, structures that kind of mirror like traditional academic societies. So that's something we've been thinking about how to do and I think would accomplish what you're describing. Yeah, basically getting the experts in a in a niche field uh, to do all of their publication through Research Hub and peer review and all that. Um, so it's on the radar, but probably I, I think we'd need uh, DOIs assigned to the publications and the ability to have peer review in order for that to to totally make sense for people. Um, yeah, and so the, the last topic, we can kind of combine it with the, the third topic is like... Can I, Patrick, just say something um, kind of to build on what Giovanni said? And I, Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, so I, I kind of, like from the other side of the spectrum, like if we want to get not only the, the academics, but also, let's say, people from the practice who actually read research papers or read... Uh, outlets such as, I don't know, Hardware Business Review is, is in my field, but I'm pretty sure in, in many different fields you have these practitioner-oriented or policy-oriented uh, outlets. I was thinking maybe it makes sense to kind of create this, this program that Research, ha uh, Research Hub would pay a certain amount for, let's say, if you've, if you've authored a paper, either you could just do create that practitioner oriented or policy oriented piece uh, yourself, which could go through a kind of a review process by some of the editors, let's say two or three of the editors, one round of review, uh, a thousand words maximum to really um, kind of, um, you know, like at, at, at like a, in a brief piece would summarize it, uh, would summarize in, 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 in clear ways what the paper was was about, or you could it could be just other people within the community uh, that they would write such a such a piece as you mentioned, and, and you like the fact that some some things are jargon free, uh, kind of clearly communicating the idea. I, I also think that would create could create this section in Research Hub like a magazine of sort. And then you could have like higher level editors that they would kind of curate these uh, papers into different editions. So you could have different sections. Let's say you have a section on biology and I don't know, longevity, you have cryptocurrency, business and, and, and what have you. I think as also as a marketing tool, it could, it could work pretty interestingly. Yeah, it's a great point. It reminds me a little bit of like uh, eLife has eLife Digest where they'll ask the authors to share like a four or five paragraph layman summary of their paper that goes like above the abstract for like anybody like not in the field who wants to quickly learn about it. Um, so yeah, I think one way we'll be able to do this is through uh, Ricardo's kind of GitHub issue bounties where we can put up like a posted bounty for anybody who wants to create like a editorial summary of a paper. And we'll be able to do like kind of bespoke uh, research coin uh, awards to people for doing that. Um, I think there's actually kind of like a interesting market of like science writers. Like I think there is some like early career scientists who like do science writing and like need to build resumes in order to get hired for like more established positions where like we could like create like a good way to earn a little bit of cash, like kind of building out that portfolio. Um, so it's a different like user segment than we're currently going after. But I think there are people there who would like to do that work, you know, and be compensated for it because they're probably just doing it for free right now on a blog. So um, 
Yeah, it's it, it's a great point. And in my mind, putting together like a bespoke bounty program uh, is probably the best way to go about it for the next month. So I'll mention that to Ricardo and make sure he includes that like within the things you can be awarded for. Um, yeah, so I guess like, uh, the last topic was basically going to be, how do we implement, you know, changes? Like how do we incentivize the things that we want to see improved for the next month? And so in my mind, that's like the Ricardo's bespoke bounty program, which we should have operating by the beginning of next week. But with five minutes left, um, I think we can just open it up to anything. Um, one topic that I have, and this is administrative, but, uh, we have like a editor, um, grant agreement contract just to help to paper uh, everything properly. So we've gone through one round of revisions um, with our attorneys and they should have that ready to go here any day. So I'll be sending out basically like DocuSigns to everybody um, that has like the editor grant agreement. And this is purely just to, to paper things to make sure that like uh, everything's done legally more or less. Um, so be on the lookout for that. Um, but aside from that, yeah, I think that's pretty much all I have. So the last five minutes, open it up to whatever you guys want to talk about. So Has anyone planned anything? Uh, yeah, please go ahead. No, you go ahead, Sapi. I was asking if any of the editors have planned any sort of special drives to bring in more users to their hub for the next month. Are you thinking like like events, like AMAs kind of thing? Yeah, I mean, did they have any sort of plans for the next one that could help bring in more use? For example, Scott was doing a lot of stuff on Twitter, for example. Yes, yeah, Scott, have you seen any metrics from the Twitter outreach? Like, are, are you getting clicks or like, uh, yeah, have you heard anything anecdotally? So I just was meaning to look after our call at... um. I don't know if y'all know, Patrick, I don't know if you've ever done this, but Twitter offers all of these great analytic tools via their ads website, and you can use them as long as you put in a credit card. So I was going to go and look at it. So you can get that on the normal site where they just look a lot better and also allows you to do like bigger images and longer videos, I think, and some other cool things. But in any case, I've been watching and they get they get good clicks and they don't result as many new followers as i would like and i don't know if that's because they get to the sign in with google and don't want to or if you know there's some other unknown reason but that's something i'm wanting to look into more in um, the second half of march is just trying to kind of up the level on these these tweets if you will yeah I know. so a really non-committal answer no, totally. Yeah, it's early too. I know Twitter has that analytics page and even just like sharing that basic analytics, I think would give insight to like, you know, is this working? Like, how can we, yeah, just to assess like what's working. Can I just say like, yeah. I, 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 sorry, Scott, please continue. go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I'll put it in the chat. Um, I just wanted to say like, I, 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 I recall bringing this up before and uh, Patrick you said that it's in the making this uh, onboarding video or something because I, I tried to onboard a couple of people and then I, I had to spend time with them trying really showing them how this works what what is that that uh, the, the coins up there how, how do you get compensated for the things that you do and I think I'm not saying it's not intuitive to understand but I kind of having a, a guide at the side for, for people. I don't know how much effort this requires, but something that people could just watch and there are particular steps that they could follow in order to do that first job, the, the first upload or wh whatever that would be. I think it, it's, it's going to be very, very va valuable in, in uh, kind of automatizing some of the process because I, I don't have the possibility to sit together with, with my colleagues and there are people, people outside of my department that I could uh, attract to the to the platform. 
Yeah, it's a it's a great point. I think a video is a easy way to help to like mass share with people and then give them insight onto why they'd want to use Research Hub. So I'd say we're about halfway through with it. Um, we've connected with Elnor Shiki, who does like a lot of like longevity kind of YouTube videos, and she has some like uh, animation background. So uh, she's agreed to help produce the video, and we've put together a script. Uh, the delay was that we had to like figure out essentially uh, what the community was going to vote on to, in order to give like accurate information within the video. And so we finalized all of that uh, last Friday. So yeah, I appreciate the reminder because that hadn't been on my radar this week, but it should be. So I will go ahead and finalize that script and uh, you know coordinate with Ricardo to get Eleanor moving on making the video. But you're totally right. Sharing a YouTube video that's like kind of fun, you know. Um, I think that's a it's a great way to help to introduce research to people. Cool. Um, yeah, any last minute thoughts? We've got about a minute left. Nick? I just wanted to add, I'm, I'm really glad to hear that the video is in the works. Uh, I just had maybe a little idea of something to add to it. Um, maybe a brief spiel at the beginning that could sort of just briefly outline what Research Hub is and what it what its goal is and stuff. So then for us as editors, that could be just like a one-stop shop. You know, if somebody's interested in the website or if they have already made a sign and we could just send that to them and it just kind of uh, standardizes that process. Um, so it's not like based on, you know, I might not be as good of a pitcher as somebody else may be, but just to have that little spiel to kind of give people the gist of it um, before showing them the features it has and stuff, I think would be great. Yeah, totally. Um, it's a great point. Just having things standardized. So that way it's easy. You, Cause even pitching is kind of like a pain, you know, nobody wants to be salesy. <laughs> like, so, so having the video do the work for you, I think is a, is a great point. Um, yeah. I'll, I can send you the script if you want, just so you can take a look to see if it like, you know, adequately does that. I think that is what Ricardo started with though. A nice little summary of like, what is research hub and why would you an academic want to even use this thing? So I'll, I'll run it past you to see if it makes sense. Um, okay. Terrific. Yeah. That sounds good. Cool. Yeah. Does anybody else have any last minute thoughts? Great. Well, thanks everybody for joining. Um, again, I think this is like super exciting. I think like the metrics look great that we're hanging on above 70 weekly active contributors. Um, we've had a lot of people just reach out being like, oh shit, like you guys have a nice little community going on. So like it's it's been a change of pace in the last like month and a half compared to before where people are like, oh wow, it's working. So like that's very exciting from our end. And yeah, I think uh, I think once we get this coin out there, we'll be able to scale it up a little bit. So we'll be making new friends, having new connections. So yeah, this is, I think, super exciting. This month specifically has come around a lot. And then even like smart people are putting a lot of effort into stuff outside of the editor program. Like Satvik wants to make a newsletter. Uh, Ricardo is helping with scripts and stuff. So yeah, in general, there's a lot of energy and I uh, feel super grateful to have you all here. So thank you. Cool. Well, I'll see you guys around. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Bye -bye. Nice to see you all. Bye-bye.